Welcome back, Van Heis. So, uh, last week, we were taking a look at your grid drawings, and those turned out amazing. Fantastic job with your grid drawings. I really love them. And uh, because we were making grids, that sort of made me think of another artist that I shared with some of you. Her name is Agnes Martin, and she's kind of like a professional grid drawer. Now, she wouldn't create a grid and then a drawing on top of it. Her entire... Uh, artwork was usually just a cluster of lines. Sometimes they were really close together, sometimes they were really far apart. And we talked about, you know, when you look at a piece of abstract art like that, that is just a bunch of lines, the art itself isn't so much the final product or the painting or drawing, but the art itself is the process. It's what you feel while you're doing it. So this artist was really interested in sitting down and being very careful to do something that would take a really, really long time. We're gonna try this out uh, this week. We're gonna try something out similar to it. We're not gonna be using a ruler and uh, drawing really large grid drawings like Agnes Martin. I'm going to be introducing to you the art of Zen Tangles. Now, if you haven't heard of a Zentangle before, pretty much what it is, it's, it's a miniature abstract work of art that's created by a collection of patterns. And you pretty much just repeat these patterns over and over. And the cool thing about Zentangles are they can be small, they can be big, but uh, no matter which way you make it, it almost always turns out unique and really cool looking. So let's get started on some Zentastic Zentangles. All right, so for Zen Tangles, all you're really going to need is some paper and something to draw with. I like to start with a pencil. I might bring in some Sharpie or some color later, but that is entirely up to you. So we're gonna get started with, I wanna turn this piece of paper into a few different Zen Tangles. So maybe I'll just go ahead and fold my paper once this way, hamburger way, and again, hamburger way this way. This just gives us four neat sections in which to work. So I'm actually going to fold my paper over. My first Zentangle is gonna go right in this area. So I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna make four dots. Two of the dots are gonna be near the top, two of the dots are gonna be near the bottom, I'm going to connect them. All right, so we have our sort of Zentangle shape. It's, it's sort of a square. Again, you know, this is not a project where we need to worry about making anything perfect. I'm gonna take my pencil now and I wanna start making a line within this box. And I want this line to have some curves, some loop-de-loops. And if I can, I wanna try to get it to touch all four sides of my shape. Not a super crazy line, not a super straight line, something kind of wavy. Uh, mine's gonna look like this. So there's my line. Now you'll notice by creating this line, I made a whole bunch of different shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different shapes. If some of those shapes look a little big to you because we are gonna be filling these in with patterns, you can go ahead and just add an extra line here or there. That way, kind of can close off these shapes and make them into little smaller areas. So maybe I'll do one there, one there. Now I've got some smaller sections. All right, from here, all we're gonna do is really just create different patterns within each of these shapes. And this project is not about going fast, it's about taking your time and, you know, repeating these patterns over and over again, just like Agnes Martin repeated her process of line creation. I want you to pick a pattern and repeat it. And while you're drawing it, sort of feel yourself just being at one with your art, uh, focus on your breathing, and just really enjoy the process of creating Zen Tangles. So I'm gonna start with just a really simple line pattern. And over here, maybe I'll try doing a wavy pattern.
All right, so I finished all of the pencil aspects of my first Zentangle and I chose to do pencil. Uh, if you want to just go right ahead and get into using a pen or a marker, that works too. Again, it's more just about the process. I'm now going to go over uh, my Zentangle in a, in a darker shade, probably using like a darker pen. And I want to think about filling in some areas with darkness and lightness and how I can make some areas pop out and how I can bring some areas back. And again, I'm just enjoying the process as I go. It's really relaxing to do something like this. I think this Zentangle is feeling completed. So these are a couple of Zentangles that I was working on earlier. And you can see that I actually added a little border around them and cut them out. I think I'm gonna do that to this one as well. Again, if you want to fill up your whole sheet, all four spaces with Zentangles, awesome. This is just one option for uh, finalizing it and making it look a little bit more like a completed project. Um, when I cut this out, I'm going to include a little bit of a border. I actually like that space at the top there, so I'm going to try to keep that space all the way around. There you have it, your very own miniature Zentangle work of art. Uh, and just like last week where I made a little signature in the bottom uh, corner, I think I'm going to do that again just to take a little bit of ownership. It's always nice to, uh, you know, add a little artist's mark of some sort. So maybe I'll today I'll just do some initials. There we go, I've got a little cursive KL. I wanted this to be a little bit swoopy and design-like, kind of like the rest of the project. All right, Van Heis, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see what kind of Zen tangles you create. Remember to enjoy the process and just make sure that you're finding time to relax and sort of just let the practice of Zentangles take you over and, and find your way into a state of meditative art creation. Thanks so much for watching and happy Zentangling!